Jeff Frick here at theCUBE. We're at the LA Convention Center at E3. It's our first time coming to this convention. It's 68,000 people in every single hall and outside, inside, hotels. It's pretty crazy. Uh, great to see you. Thanks so much for having me. Years ago, it was really much more about a, a trade show so that you know the big people who are going to buy the disc could actually come to E3, right, right. check out our games, and place their disorders. And now it's really much more of a consumer phenomenon as right. well. Less of a competition, less of brands trying to outdo each other, but more of let's make this more about the games than the booth babes and those things. It's funny, everything's changed and nothing's changed. Right. People are always super excited. There's always gamers that, that want to see the newest stuff. That hasn't changed at all. But just the sheer technology differences. So we're doing this series as part of the Western Digital Data Makes Possible, and data is such a big part of what you guys do. You can really start to understand who your players are, and so if you're going to do an upsell offer, you know, you can understand like, oh, this person has actually already purchased this type of material, so I'm going to give them this type of upsell versus this type of upsell. Or, you know, I see all my players are really struggling on level three, and no one's making it through. What's wrong with level three? If they, they're spending too much time in an area not knowing what they're doing, we'll go, okay, right, we need to change that, we need to signpost that differently, we need to turn around and say, how can we make it clearer to the player so they know what they do, but also keep the reward so that they feel like they've achieved it, they feel like they figured it out. Right. We place people in front of the game in very early stages uh, to, to see if our core ideas are working, and then based on that, we then look at video footage, interviews, and all that stuff to kind of, the, that feedback uh, the, in, into the design loop of, right. of the process. So previously, years ago, to get some of these insights, you would have had to be one of the largest game companies on the planet. Right, and right. now with you know the democratization of these different game engines and then the democratization of this type of like tooling and online services that are available, it really creates an amazing opportunity for all developers everywhere. We see these tremendous booths that are here, fabulous graphics, VR coming down the pike, CPU and graphical chips are all over the place. So basically power and internet and 5G is coming, mobility is going to be way, way faster. The horsepower that you need to run these kind of games is actually pretty staggering. Um, we, we compute a lot of stuff on the GPUs, the CPUs, tons and tons and tons of objects. We have physics constraints and things that are costly for you know the computation cycles. And then there's like memory issues. You know, we have streaming that we have to kind of get better at. These worlds are very large, and so to store the things that you're going to see and do takes a lot of actual you know hard drive space. And the speed at which we can load and unload things is a critical factor in terms of you know unlocking the freedom of your experience. Right. We really have a PC development technology that is easy to port to Xbox and PlayStation. So you know, we have a private cloud in Europe and a private cloud in North so America. So you run this on your own infrastructure? Oh yeah, we run our, totally on our own infrastructure, and uh, it has its advantages because we're completely in control. But I think now. Now, you just don't need to make the big investment in hardware up front. You can solve all the problems in a cloud solution and, right. then, uh, and then deploy either privately or, or, right. or publicly. It's much more flexible now than it was. We know from our creator standpoint, the biggest thing that they complain about is, hey, I want to grow. Right, like I've been streaming for X amount of years, I'm creating content, how do I grow? At Twitch, we have like the broadest means of ways to monetize, but also the lowest barrier of entry to take advantage of them. And our subscribers, by the way, they know that they're supporting you and proud to do so. You know, right. they enjoy supporting their content creators because they know if they didn't support you, you might not be streaming. Yeah. And they love being playing a role in keeping their favorite creators around. The content that you see here today is much more diverse and much broader. You know, we still have a long way to go as an industry, but it's very different than my first E3 yes. 17 years ago. It used to be gamers play games because of the technology, and now they play games because of the games. Right. Because no one cares about the technology anymore. Right. Because you could do almost anything on any device now and now, so it's really important to us as game developers to hide the technology from players and just give them a great experience. Right. And every year, you know, new stuff rolls out, slightly newer Xbox, slightly newer PlayStation, better PCs, so we just stay up to date with the drivers and make sure that we support whatever crazy hardware is coming out, right. and, uh, and it all works. Right. You're watching theCUBE from E3 at Lake Convention Center. Thanks for watching.